Affirmative action was first introduced during the Reconstruction era in the late 1800s in order to support formerly enslaved persons. In spite of this, it did not gain more widespread acceptance until the 1940s, when President Franklin Roosevelt implemented a ban on discrimination in employment. In the 1960s, significant attention was drawn to the issue of race and gender discrimination. President Johnson introduced Executive Order 11246 in 1965, which became known as the first federal affirmative action law. The order prohibited discrimination in employment based on race, color, religion, or national origin. In subsequent years, the order was expanded to include gender and disabilities discrimination as well. In 1968, affirmative action took on a new form, numerical goals and timetables. This provision was added to ensure employers committed to hiring an appropriate number of minorities in certain positions. While many welcomed this change, critics argued that it was reverse discrimination. In 1971, the Supreme Court declared that affirmative action was constitutional in the case of Griggs v. Duke Power Co. The court ruled that employers must go beyond the bare minimum of compliance with the law when addressing racial discrimination. As a result, affirmative action programs grew in popularity, particularly in higher education. In 1978, the Supreme Court established that the race could be used as a factor in college admissions. This was known as the Bakke decision and opened the door for further affirmative action in the education sector. In the 1980s, some states began to introduce laws which prohibited affirmative action programs. However, the Supreme Court ruled that the law against affirmative action in these states was unconstitutional. By the 1990s, affirmative action programs had become deeply entrenched in many areas of society. This prompted further protests by those who argued that the programs perpetuated discrimination rather than resolve it. In 1995, a Supreme Court decision regarding affirmative action in the University of Texas caused shockwaves, resulting in many lawsuits. This case set a precedent that affirmative action must be the functional equivalent of true equality in result. Courts began to focus more on evaluating schools' admissions policies. This led to more ambiguity and inconsistency in the way affirmative action was implemented. Today, there is an ongoing debate about the role of affirmative action in America. Some believe that affirmative action has led to widespread discrimination, while others argue that it has created greater opportunities for all. As the discussion continues, it is important to consider the societal impact of affirmative action.